and welcome along to Fight Day Focus. We are the final word before we get to the fights. All the talking is done. We have exclusive footage to bring to you. My name is John Good and I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Alex Richens, our very own esports commentator, aka Balian. Right. And of course, BAFTA winning actor and a credentialed MMA media now. Yeah, Clay <laughs> true. that's true, yeah. It's it's true, it's happened. I didn't even introduce you to the guy from the in-betweeners as well. Well, we, we, I thought we was gonna get so much further into the show we before it was <laughs> brought up and it's right straight in there. Yeah, well, no, it's fine. What about the dance? Do people ask you about the dance a lot? It, it does get brought up a lot, yeah, it does. Does that annoy you? Um, well, if you're about to ask me to do it, the answer's well, flat no, so... Uh, well, oh, well, that's good because Alex is willing to learn body <laughs> popping, so the sheer the music... Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> Did not sign up for this. Well, you have no choice well, now. Well, imagine right? you can't get more annoyed than Ricky Gervais does, right? When he gets asked to do the dance. <laughs> is, he, is he known to get annoyed? Do you, do you remember the he? office dance? Remember? I remember the dance, but I don't know if he's known know. to I be annoyed I haven't by asked it. him personally. He might have to... I wouldn't be surprised, though, you know. Yeah. It's a bit of a stupid dance, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, dancing aside, we've got some fight stuff to yes. talk about. And when we were preparing this show, things really did get flipped on their head last night <laughs> when yeah, we saw could say that the sure. way in activity and everything that unfolded. Um, but before we get into it, let me tell you guys what we've got coming up. We will have interviews with Charles Oliveira, Gaethje Namajunas. We're going to be joined by top 10 UFC women's bantamweight Pani Kianza. She's going to weigh in on the female co-main events as well. Lots of exclusive weigh-in footage. And you guys will have a test of both athleticism and UFC knowledge later on. So I hope you're well and truly prepared for that. Oh, yeah, I've been limbering up. I'm, I have I'm not, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how that one goes. Um, but let's get straight to it, shall we? Charles Oliveira. Yesterday, when he stepped on the scales officially, he didn't make weight. He was half a pound over. And what that means is, when he steps into the octagon later tonight, he will be stripped of his title. It will now be a vacant title. Justin Gaethje, who did make weight, however, he will be able to fight for the title. If Oliveira wins, he will become the number one contender for the vacant title when that happens but not tonight At some when point he faces future, yeah. uh, Justin <laughs> Gaethje. So very unfortunate circumstances. Alex, you know, you, as a commentator, mm. these are the kind of things we have to set the table with. It wouldn't have yeah. been the leading script going into this one. And as I say, just really unfortunate. It is unfortunate. You know, some people have said it, it's a bit of a bad look for the division maybe, but it's entirely, you know, I think that's the fighter's perspective on it. I think really... There is some question of controversy with the scales, but nobody else seemed to miss weight, so that question's kind of been put to bed in, in its own way. I think it comes down to, does it affect the performance, you know? Not just the, the fact that he had to cut the extra pounds, maybe he's a little fatigued, but the title is something he's no longer defending. You know, does that change the mentality, the attitude of Charles going into the fight? We don't really know, but it could play a factor as well. OK, well, let's see how Charles is sounding, because he caught up with Megan. So let's see what the current champ had to say about the situation. Thank you very much, guys. Charles, obviously, this isn't the result you wanted. How did we get here on weigh-in day? Cara, a gente não tá aqui para inventar história. Eu juro pela minha filha que a coisa mais importante da minha vida na quinta-feira à noite eu bati o peso. The champion has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira. And um, the story is, I went up to my room on Thursday. I made weight in the UFC scale on Thursday night. Go up to my room. Did not consume anything. No water. No 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 food. No anything. I, I swear to God, in, in the name of my daughter, the most sacred thing in my in my life. Um, I went to bed. Wake up the following day. UFC scale. I'm. It's a it's a pound over. I'm looking at it as a, as a, a kilogram over actually. Like he, I'm one over. And I don't understand what happened. I, I can't understand. I mean, we work, we're professionals. Uh, I did not do anything wrong. I, it, to me, it was just, it didn't make sense. Um, other fighters started talking about it as well. They were talking about exactly those 200 grams, 300 grams, and it was exactly the difference in the scale of the USA. So uh, this is where we're going back to. The champion has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira. Charles, what was that hour like when you were attempting to lose the half pound to make 155.0? Mesmo já tendo batendo, já mesmo que eu já tivesse batido, eu fiz de tudo, eu me sacrifiquei, eu fiz tudo, só que a balança nem mexia. Basically, I did everything I could. I mean, as soon as I found out and that that happened, I went up there. I did the steam room, um, worked out, trying to get that. The, the, the champion cannot afford to do something like this. You, you need to work on it. It doesn't matter. I, I made weight on Thursday. And I, but regardless, a champion continues to work and goes until the end. And I try to do everything because I'm a professional, I'm a champion. And I, I mean, I had my briefs on and 
at the, the well, it was one weight. I took him off, and it was the same weight. So we, we tried to understand that, but the champion has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira. Charles, I know that you are m more motivated than ever to win this fight against Justin Gaethje. Whether that belt is on the line or not, I know it doesn't change things for you, but now what do you expect out of yourself in this main event? If they thought that I would frustrate them, they will see a 10 times better. I'm ready for this. The champion is called Charles Oliveira. There's no other uh, if this, if you think that this is going to frustrate me, you're wrong. Uh, uh, the, the champion, the, the champion has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira, and I'm going to come out strike. Charles, we appreciate your time today, and we look forward to seeing you fight. Thank you so much. Thanks, so much. Thanks. guys. Back to you. Thanks, Megan. Well, there's a fair bit to unpack there. I, I think you'll both agree. Um, it just an unprecedented occasion. We've never seen this before in the UFC, and. It's one thing I can't get out of my mind. The champion has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira. And that still remains until he walks yep. into the octagon later yep. tonight. But, I mean, this is just bonkers. What, it, what do you make of it? Well, I mean, it, just think about how much he's lost. It's not just the belt. He's lost uh, any chance of potentially getting a bonus is gone because he's not eligible. Some for of that his purse. His, some of his purse. In his next fight, whether that be Makachev, Darius later on in the year, if he beats Gaethje, that is, uh, he won't be getting the pay-per-view points. He won't be on that champion's contract thing. So he's lost so much. How he can go into this fight and not be emotionally affected by this he has to be. It would be impossible to not be. He's lost so much. Um, what happened in that extra hour he had to cut the weight and he came back exactly the same weight? Only his, his team knows and only he knows what, what really went down in, in that hour. But it's, yeah, the, the emotional impact of, of what happened is going to be massive, surely. And the other person who, of course, is affected by this is Justin Gaethje. Let's hear what, he, what his take was on this situation. It's not the first time he's missed weight, it's the fifth time he's missed weight. So, uh, there's no excuses. Um, they want to talk, make excuses about a scale. Three out of the four people making weight, championship weight made weight. So it's all if he was, uh, if he was there at 9 a.m. and this happened, I could see it, but he shows up at 11 a.m. last second, you know, it's obviously going south. So, you know, I don't want to hear any excuses. All right, well, you can see that he's obviously a, a little bit upset by the situation and this kind of d defensive nature around the scales. You know, these are official scales that the commission bring in and are calibrated. They are official. And of course, as Justin Gaethje rightly pointed out, three out of the four in championship fights, they made the weight they, they, on the nail as well. So it just gets more and more frustrating, I guess, for all involved. Yep. Yeah, I mean, look, but at the end of the day, I think uh, Gaethje and I, I love Trevor Whitman. I think he, he does a phenomenal job of Gaethje, Rose, Usman. And I think mentally he'll go into it knowing that, that for him, nothing has changed. As much as this can be frustrating, I think Gaethje should hopefully have the right mindset for this. I think that in a weird way, this actually could play a little bit more into Gaethje's hands because I think as we talked about the emotional response Oliveira is going to have to this situation, I can see Oliveira coming out even faster pace than I was expecting him to mm. before. And then I was expecting a fast pace from both these guys. Mm. And I think that if Oliveira potentially fights emotionally, it could play into Gaethje's hands. We know that Gaethje has probably got the power advantage and maybe the durability advantage as well. So if they come out swinging for each other, it could really work out for Justin. One thing I will counter to that with oh, my friend on. Paul Felder went yep. to Twitter and the socials last night and he feels, feels really sympathetic towards Justin Gaethje because he said, as a fighter, someone going for that championship belt, you want to take the belt yeah. from the champion. But right now, the belt will be sat octagon side without a, without a waist for it to be wrapped around. So Alex, with that in mind, you know, do you think Justin, does it devalue if he comes away with a victory? Uh, I mean, it, it might do, but I think ultimately... It's a little footnote, isn't I know, it? but if you look at the history of, of some divisions, especially lightweight, there has been a bit of a mess around there in recent years, right? And Habib won the title from Ally Quinta, but it didn't really change the opinion of him in the fans' eyes. And given what Charles has done, the performances he's put on recently, if Justin goes out there and beats him... And we clearly see the best version of Charlie. We don't have this underlying, oh, he's been, you know, changed by the weight cut maybe a little. If he beats the best version of Charlie Oves, I think, I think it doesn't matter. I think the fans are going to get behind Justin anyway. And I think they'll, they'll see him as champion. Yeah. And just on the character of Oliveira as, as well, Alex, 
Justin Gaethje has come out calling him a quitter. Mm. It's something that he clearly hasn't been able to put to bed around the media and maybe his, uh, his fellow fighters, which is maybe slightly unfair given the, the, the run that he's been on. Gaethje feels it's still there and yeah. something that he'll yeah. be able to, to poke at. He even said there in that interview that it's the fifth time he made weight. First time, however, at 155 yeah. pounds. So there's definitely some mental war warfare going on here. Do you think that that will play a part in the way that this fight conducts itself? Um, I don't know. If you talk about how the fight conducts itself, just generally, I mean, it's two guys that like to pressure and come forward. And we've all acknowledged how good Justin is at that forward pressure game. But Charles comes from shoot the box. You know, they are pressure fighters. They invented that style of fighting almost in MMA, just walking forward. So I don't think it's going to affect his performance too much. It's, it's hard to say, but... This is a guy who's missed weight five times, but also has the most finishes in UFC history. So it's kind of, it's not really affected his performances previously. So I wouldn't expect it to, to do that tonight either. Yeah, and they, they got up close and personal and they both seem like they're very, very up for it. I mean, we had some great stare downs, which we'll, we'll get to later on in, in the program. But I do also feel like this is a great opportunity for Justin. He tried and failed in one desert in the Middle East and now he goes to the desert at home. And, and if he does win, then he's in front of his, his friends and family. And just what, what a wonderful story that would be if he's a victorious. I think Drake has placed a big <laughs> bet. On him it's pinching a curse, victory. I think we talked about, right? That's the, the curse of Drake. Yeah, there's something. Is it when he walks down with someone yeah. or they play Drake? Or there's a few they... curses. If you, if you walk out to Eminem, I think, as well, that's yeah. a, a popular curse. <laughs> so talking about face-offs and mean mugging, etc., you guys have... Uh, I see there's a little bit of form. Blake, I think we're going to look at some footage of you staring down the camera. Yeah. Look, uh, <laughs> that would put me on tilt. Yeah, if we were okay. about to fight and I yeah. saw your teeth looking as splendid as that, yeah. the hair was wonderful as well. Thank you I'd very much. I'd love you to tell me about your hair care routine for that once this is wrapped. Um, but you, can you imagine being in that position up on the stage with all of those bright lights with the alpha alphas and... How would you react to all of that? In a, in a, in a face-off situation? In an actual fight situation. Oh, God, probably terribly. I mean, I'd prob <laughs> could I'd you probably... act your way through it? I, 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 could, <laughs> I would like to think I could act my way through it, but you'll probably just get something like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, he's acting his way through it in the most bizarre, unrecognisable way possible. Love that. Love that. And Bailey and you, uh, well, you've been showing us some techers recently. I, I suppose, see. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Now, <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah, some little footage to, <laughs> to show the fans of your prowess. Look at this. Who spat in your porridge that morning? <laughs> that's making my hips ache. That yeah, is, uh, that's that. not me. I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> ah, you're being modest. I like that. Well, now I'm delighted to bring into the studio virtually top 10 women's bantamweight, Panny Kianzed. Panny, how are we doing? Thank you for hiring me. Panny, we're joined in studio by Blake and Alex, and we're, we've all got some... We're all going to be leaning on you for some analysis for this fight. But first and foremost, congratulations on your last fight with fellow Swede Lena Landsberg. It was a, a tough fight, as you Thank expected. You. Yeah. Uh, and it's really uh, interesting to fighting a fellow Swede. Never happens. Like, <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, and you guys actually yeah. are from the same town as well. Malmö, right? So, yeah. Like, yeah, just bizarre circumstances. <laughs> Yeah, we don't live that far from each other either. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And there's a couple of parallels which we'll come on to as well. But I see your teeth are looking a little different, Panny. I, I hear that lots of dentists around Europe were getting in touch after you were uh, posing with a, a toothless grin. Yeah, they're like stalking my DMs and everything. But <laughs> if, you, like, if you follow my tough uh, story is that I haven't had my teeth for like four years. But I don't fight with the, with the, with the retainer in. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah. top line then, Panny. I know that you do a lot of analysis work for the uh, UFC broadcaster locally. You know, give us your thoughts on, on this co-main event between these two women. I think it's super interesting, especially for it being a rematch eight years later. And... Um, just thinking of that Rose was so young when they fought the first time and uh, Carla's been like yeah, on a tear lately I thought she after her loss against uh, Tatiana Suarez she's been uh, looking really good now your rematch with Lena was something like 10 years apart 
these guys, I think, are, are eight years apart, some, something like that. Is, can we read into anything from those experiences or is, so, is there so much water under the bridge, if you like, that it's just like in the annals of someone's mind? I think it was a long time ago. I try not to think about like uh, that I won the last time and everything because we were fairly new to the MMA game. But I think you always have something in the back of your head that you know you have some kind of advantage that I've already beaten you. And she knows that. Another thing I think that's quite interesting about this, and you can, you can talk about the experience, is the ultimate fighter. The fact that they were in each other's space for an extended period of time. You've been there, you understand what the ultimate fighter experience is like. Does any of that add something additional into tonight's fight? Um, yeah, of course it does. I mean, being in the house, I loved it. It was it was an amazing experience and you got friends for life but i mean they've been there and they're in each other's faces and being in the house and fighting each other that's a very special thing to go through i mean you have to like have dinner with each other i have to go to just like being roommates imagine fighting your roommate right i mean it's happened yeah. a lot for me but, uh, <laughs> she's, yeah. whole, she's good and, no not 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 true if you're Jorge masvidal as well right call me yeah, oh, Masvidal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it certainly happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's hear from Rose, shall we? Because uh, Megan O'Leary yeah. caught up with her, and, and we can react to her words after. So here's Rose with Megan. Carla Esparza and her opponent, the reigning, defending strongweight champion of the world, the Rose Namajunas. Thank you so much, guys. Rose, you are no stranger to rematches. Your last six fights have all been immediate rematches. But what's it like facing someone years later that, yes, you've competed against, but it's almost like a completely new fight? Yeah, it is a completely new fight. Um, obviously, we have some history, and um, that for sure goes into the preparation as far as like just processing everything. But um, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm staying present in the moment, and I know that, like, you know, uh, Carla's a beast, so I just got to be prepared. When you look back at that fight, I mean, you're, what, 22 years old. What do you see from yourself? I mean, who was Rose then? A uh, way different person, for sure. I mean, I had hair for one, you know. <laughs> uh, but other than that, no, I was just a kid. Uh, and I was just trying to do the best that I could. But, you know, ultimately, I had a that, that, that fight laid the groundwork for, like, the rest of my career as far as learning lessons and everything like that. So if anything, I mean, we talk about the growth in the last eight years. But I think just the last few months, just since that last fight and preparing for this one, I feel like I've made, um, I don't know about the exact same amount of growth, but definitely an exponential amount of growth. Really? Where do you feel like you can see it in yourself the most? Oh, um, definitely in my mind and my spirit. My uh, the skills, the the skills for sure. Um, I'm I'm a little stronger and more conditioned and whatnot. But everything's just like super efficient. So um, I'm just getting better everywhere. What do you believe uh, must go right for you in order to leave Phoenix, Arizona, with the title? It's got to be God's will if it's going to be and still. But uh, I think I just got to do my best. Uh, I believe that. Every time I do my best, I am the best. So I, I believe it's the same thing with this fight. Excellent. Well, we cannot wait to watch. Rose, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks. Guys, back to you. Thanks very much. Well, interesting stuff there, Penny, from Rose. But I want your take on her demeanor and more specifically, like, facing off. Because Rose is a, a very interesting character. She's worn her heart on her sleeve for her full time with the UFC. But she's, like, scary emotionless when she gets up there and faces off. And... As someone that's been up on that stage, like what, what do you guys look for when you're nose to nose? Well, I'm trying to if, if be like, uh, like you talk about, like emotionless. Not to show like too much emotion, not to show any, like I don't want to show my opponent any weaknesses. And I think she's doing this really good. She's going in blank. And I mean, she's talking about all these like, um, mental aspect of her game and how much she's involved and everything and I think every fight and every walk in and every stare down I see her do she's like calmer and calmer and she does like her thing she has a thing she does and on the scale where she you know gets her zen going or something but that works for her yeah I think really. it's a uh, mind heart soul I think is the yeah the pat down she does right yeah 
Yeah, she's a, a unique character, mm, right? Yeah. But, it, but it works for yeah. her. And, and Blake, on your podcast, the MMA Fan Podcast, which I urge UFC fans to check out, of course, you did a full analysis of, of the strawweight division. So what do you think about this one? Like the, the first, I think she was the first strawweight Invicta champion, first UFC strawweight champion, Carla Esparza, and then the body of work that we've seen from Rose since. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, for, 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 for this fight in particular, I, 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 I agree with Penny. I, I think Carla's being maybe a little bit overlooked. I think Rose has become such a star. And uh, as you say, won all these amazing high, high profile fights. But I think that one thing that's really interesting is I don't think that Rose has fought anyone that's as good a wrestler as Carla right. since she fought Carla. True. So that's stylistically just going to be very, very interesting mm. to see how she, how she deals with that. But again, when you watch that first fight, the tough finale, Rose, Rose's evolution is, is really obvious to see. You know, in that first fight, she's throwing a lot of spinning attacks. She seems to be far less accurate and have far less uh, consideration for her gas tank. Whereas now, under Trevor Whitman and Pat Barry, she, she's... She's so precise and, and everything is thrown with, with, with intent, but there's no wasted energy, I think. And, and that's what I think is uh, so different about Rose and the footwork's going to be interesting. So, yeah, again, stylistically, she's not fought a wrestler that's as good as Carla since Carla. So will that be different? Will Carla's style be something that Rose just can't overcome? That'll be a really interesting one. But going forward for the strawweight division, I mean, it's just stacked full of, mm. full of talent. Yeah, spoiled for matchups and entertainment, of course. And, and before we let you go, Panny, uh, Blake is going to ask some advice here because your daughter is, uh, oh, is on her jiu-jitsu journey, right? So, Panny, I, I thought you two could have a, a little conversation about how it can, how Blake can it, like influence his daughter onto the mats. Oh, you want her to start rolling? Well, no, she, she, she actually does. I didn't know we were going to ask this, but we're going to, she, does, she does do a few uh, little like jujitsu classes and stuff. She's really enjoying it. I mean, against me, I have uh, the ability to tickle her. So she's, she's really, she, she really struggles with that as a defense. I don't know as a fighter if you've got techniques to avoid the tickle. But um, other than that, no, she's just really, what, what tips do you have for just, I suppose, uh, either young children in general or, or, or young girls just to kind of keep them enthusiastic about the sport if i would have kids i would put all my children into like wrestling or judo because i think uh, having role models as you know rose namajunas uh, myself uh, ronda rousey i mean we need more of that couldn't agree more that's brilliant love that panny that thank you point. very much for your analysis can't wait to see you back in the octagon and of course congratulations thank you on so much for having me getting a seat at the rankings table which is obviously big stuff indeed yes i will see you at the rankings yeah, Bye. love it. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, we've still got a couple more things to come. We're going to be talking UFC doppelgangers, and these guys are going to go on the ball in a very stiff test of athleticism and UFC knowledge. But now we have to, of course, talk about the people's fight, if you like, between Michael Chandler and Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson! Gentlemen, like what do we think about this one? Alex, you know, you, you do commentary on this. This is a I commentator's do. dream. It is. This is a, such a fun matchup, really, because you've got two guys who are just finishing machines. Charlon mentioned that when he joined the UFC, this is the person he wanted to fight, Tony. It's a person he respected a lot, thought it'd be a great matchup, and it, it really is going to be. What I'm interested to see is how it starts, because Charla knows he can win a fight in 30 seconds. He comes out ready to do that. He comes out hard, hunts for your chin, he's got a beautiful long left hook that Tony's going to have to be careful of, had a lot of trouble with that in recent fights. And Tony has started fast previously, Barbosa, that was a very fast-paced fight, but sometimes it takes him a little while to find his rhythm, find his pace. So the opening round, the first two rounds, I really want to see what happens if Chandler can put an onslaught of offense on Tony, slow him down, cause enough damage to change the rest of the fight, or if Tony can fight going backwards, he's very good getting the head off the center line, hits a lot of spinning techniques, retreating, so I want to see the pressure versus the defensive capabilities of Tony, and if he can come forward and get Chandler backing up as well. And Blake, they, these two are so different in terms of their characters. Yeah. You've got like the, the guy with the, the American flag in Michael Chandler, like you can put him up on a poster, he looks great, just like he looks squeaky clean, and then 
you've got just the, the, just the craziness of El Kukui, right? And the unpredictable yes. nature of what he might say, but also, yeah. <laughs> of course, what he might do as well. But which camp are you in? Uh, well, I think this fight is all down to which Michael Chandler turns up. Okay. And I think that if we see uh, the Michael Chandler that fought uh, Gaethje or even Oliveira, this guy who's, you know, your boss's favourite fighter. He's got the, the Dana White privilege, all those things that he's come out and, and talked about. Um, then I think that uh, it, it could be a really interesting fight and could potentially go either way because he wants to be a showcase for the fans and show everyone that win, lose or draw, my, my stock's going to go up and you're going to love watching me fight. But really, I think what Henry Hooft will want is for the Michael Chandler to come out that's just going to wrestle him. Because we've seen Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush really kind of dominate Tony Ferguson with wrestling. And we know that Chandler has the credentials to do that. So if Chandler comes out wanting to put on a show, we could be in for some crazy three-round war. If Chandler comes out doing what his coaches probably want him to do we might see a more dominant wrestling heavy display but yeah. it'd be exciting if he comes out being crazy Chandler <laughs> on the interesting characters you know and referencing your podcast who's been kind of one more of the one of the more kind of outlandish ones you've had oh my god we've had so many I mean like well yourself obviously oh, uh, uh, <laughs> you're mad <laughs> your stories of running for a wee middle <laughs> broadcast um, uh, but no like Michael Bisping told a story about um uh, an attack in his home when he was a teenager, you know, someone breaking into his house and yes, dealing with that. Thanks. Crazy, really harrowing story. But then we've had Tyron Wood. Tyron Woodley was shirtless in space. You can check that out. That's as crazy as it sounds. Um, uh, Paddy Pimblett we've had on. Ian Gary sung Grease Lightning and we talked about a certain... He's uh, got some pipes as well. He's though. got some pipes. He's not a bad, not bad singer. He's probably a better golfer, but you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, Ian Gary, we, we also talked about a very funny fish punching scene from the in-betweeners that he Loved, One of my favourite um, scenes. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> then we've had a bunch of the Cage Warriors guys on as well that will soon hopefully be in the UFC. I mean, we interviewed Ian Gary and Paddy before they made it to the UFC. And well, it, it sounds like Paddy's too commercial for you now because you were in. He's early, been on three but, times. Yeah, he's, you know. he's been one of our, <laughs> but the most, the guests we've had on the most. He's been. Uh, that's one thing about Paddy. I think he's been very loyal to the people that were there, you know, with right. him earlier on. And that's, you know, I give shout out to Paddy for that and big thanks to him. Well, because you've seen so much of him, and of course you've spent so much time with Jay from the in-betweeners. <laughs> but they've, I've never seen them both in the same room at the same time. Uh, yeah, so, uh, who knows? <laughs> but what do you think? Do you like, do you like this doppelganger? Do, what do you mean? Do, do I like the do hair? Do you think what, they look like one another? Do I think, no, they don't look anything Come like on. each other. No, they don't. They just, they've got a similar, unique, let's call it, hairstyle. People would say a similar demeanour as well. I've heard that. <laughs> I mean, they actually do look <laughs> more like each other there than I've ever thought. Hard to argue against them, Blake. Yeah, it's Carefully true. Carefully chosen Tiny photos. Fans. Yeah. Well, if is... you don't like this one and staying with Paddy, how about this one? Oh. Pavel oh, Nedved. Yeah. Nedved. When Paddy told me that, I nearly couldn't continue the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like, just, just saying the word Pavel Nedved, like, just, I love that. That's brilliant. But it doesn't stop there. Of course, with the, the fanfare that surrounds Paddy. Oh, yeah. He yeah. Man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And notice that we put Paddy in fight, not Paddy at the chip <laughs> shop, yeah. because it wouldn't quite resonate the same way. He Man takes days off. Come on. Like, he's yeah, not, of course. Yeah, he's got a cheat day yeah. too. Yeah. I wonder if it goes to his cheeks quite like it does with, uh, with Paddy. I'm going to yeah. put it out there. Just get, Darren's a friend of mine, and he's going to hate me for doing this. But do you remember that viral moment that went round with that scouser in the convenience yes. store? Oh. Well, we see Darren the Gorilla Till, and, you know, when you're in a spotlight, people are going to make comparisons. And let, let's see if, if you guys agree well, with see, the consensus sorry. here. <laughs> <laughs> The teeth are on point. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> the teeth and the tan. <laughs> oh, there we go. Apologies for the colourful language. I wish I had a, like a sign off Darren. catchphrase, you know, like something like We'll good. develop just, one we'll for you. One, we'll you get know? one going, yeah. Love it. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we've spoken about the fights, we've done the analysis, but we are now at the business end of the show where we're going to put you two to the test with your reflexes and your knowledge. So let's go on the ball. On, 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 on. 
welcome to On The Ball. This is the heavyweight portion of Fight Day Focus. So gentlemen, I mean, you both look splendid. This is a very simple game. You have 90 seconds. You need to hit that ball as many times as you can in that allocated time. And I'm going to be asking you both questions. I'll be alternating that one. We have some official counters in the building as well. This is all very professional. As you can see, uh, one thing though, you can only play with your own balls, not with one another's. Okay? Oh, you, I don't know. Well, you look disappointed. I am disappointed. Yeah. To be fair, as a show of sportsmanship, I think we should touch balls touch before. Balls. Good luck, sir. Yeah, touch balls. Oh, aren't you good? Yeah. Aren't yeah. you good? Yeah. Right, gentlemen, are you ready? Yes. No, but yes, sure. Yeah. Okay, right. The time starts now. Right, so Blake, Rosanama Yunus is not only a virtuoso inside the octagon, but also on a certain musical instrument. Which instrument does Piano. Play? Yes. Alex, living up to the moniker as Cowboy Donald Cerrone owns a ranch. BMF Ranch. It is called the BMF Ranch. So Blake, within, ooh, two within 50,000, how many Instagram followers does Paddy Pimlet have? Oh. 760,000. Oh, that's very close. That's a good guess. Alex, to within 50,000, how many Instagram followers does Darren Till have? Oh, 850. Quite far off, but he's had a few cancelled. Oh, my bad. Uh, Blake, sorry to do this to you. How do you spell Karolina Kvalkovic? Oh, you're joking. What, just the last name? Yeah, let's just go the last name because uh, the first bit's too easy. K O W. Oh, I don't know, K-A-W-I-C-H, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty good, um, but it's not right. And then Alex, Please don't how ask do me you to spell, spell Joanna Jungjecek's oh, family mean, name? I mean, J-E-Y-C, I have no idea after that. You I mean, clearly don't have an idea. It could be anything. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so then Blake, many people think of Vegas as the home of the UFC, but Ten where was left. UFC one held? Oh no, uh, Atlantic Five, City, I don't know. Four, Incorrect. Three, he may not two, use his profession as a one. nickname, but former, oh. Well done, gentlemen. Very good stuff. Now, one thing I didn't tell you at the, at the start there, you did get points for the uh, correct answers, <clears throat> but fortunately for us, Neither of you did very well. <laughs> so you got a question or an answer right, both of you a piece, so that's three points. Well done. But well done. listening into it now, with 221, Alex, I think that's good. That's a good hit. I'm count. happy with that. I don't mean I have, I have no reference, but yeah. it's very good, it's very good. But it's not good enough. Because with 231 he's playing! Yes! Oh, well, pick up. yes <laughs> oh, 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 there you go. Respect. That looks yeah. great. Congratulations. Woo! Woo! Wonderful stuff. Thank you both for being great sports and great to have you here in the studio and wear that with pride, although I I'm will. immediately <laughs> going to be taking that off of you. I think it was No way! I'm done! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wolf Fight fans, enjoy the fights tonight. It is a massive pay-per-view in Arizona. If you're in the UK or Ireland, you can catch the fights on BT Sports. Check out ESPN Plus forward slash PPV if you're in the States. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back at the next pay-per-view. Woo! Woo!